What's up guys? I am a oil painter. I mostly paint landscapes, but I also paint pet portraits. And as many of you know, Jenna Marbles is a YouTuber and she has some dogs. She has four dogs and we love them. We all think they're hilarious, especially Mr. Sermit. So <laughs> I'm going to be painting those dogs today. I just grabbed some screenshots of them from some of her videos and I merged them together in Affinity Photo and uh, kind of just lassoed around them to make them all fit here. I'm going to be painting a neutral background behind them. And we got here Marbles, Kermit, Peach, and Bunny. So I'm going to paint all of them on this canvas here. This is a 12 inch by 24 inch canvas using oil paint. All right, so for this one, I'm going to use the grid method. So I get these dogs uh, accurately painted with the right proportions for their eyeballs versus their nose and their tongue sticking out. So I already put the grid on my reference photograph. Now I'm going to apply the grid onto my canvas and then I will match the photograph to the canvas to get started with sketching it out. All right, now I'm ready to sketch out the outline of the dogs. All right, so I have them all sketched out just to see where they're gonna go on this canvas. And they all look a little bit creepy right now. And I was cracking up painting uh, <laughs> Kermit's tongue sticking out. <laughs> now that we got the sketch done, I can start to paint the background color behind the dogs. Then I can start working on the dogs, adding bits of detail at a time. So looking at this again, I think I'm gonna move Kermit over this way just a little bit so there's a little bit more equal space between the dogs. For the background, I wanna make a nice, cool, neutral shade that has some blue, raw umber, and white. If you guys haven't seen Jenna Marble's videos at all, she does some painting videos sometimes. And uh, this year she did a Bob Ross tutorial. I thought that was pretty cool. And she's tried some acrylic pour painting videos. So keep up the art videos, Jenna. I like those. If you ever want to collab, I can teach you how to paint your dogs. <laughs> all right, so now we're going to work on painting marbles first. And <laughs> Let's see, Marbles is wearing a jean jacket in this uh, picture that I got of him, so I'm gonna do that first. Just some phthalo blue and white and a little bit of raw umber. When 
when I paint pet portraits, first I will paint the base layer of the pet's fur, and that's usually a darker color, shadow color, and I'll also start to fill in the main features, including the eyes, the nose, and the mouth line. After getting those features filled in with a base color that's typically darker than the rest of the fur, I'll go back after letting that paint dry and start to add the individual hairs and the highlights, where the light's coming from, the twinkle in the eyes, the reflection in the eyes, and the more of the colors that we find in the ears and under the mouth. So he's like a gray color, but he's more of an olive gray. So I'm gonna put a little bit of sap green mixed in with my white and black. Maybe a hint of raw umber too. I'm using the same technique I used to paint marbles for Kermit, getting that base layer of paint for the fur and making it a little bit lighter where we have the highlights on the fur, a little bit darker where we have more shadow. Also, Kermit has shorter hair than marbles, so I need to have a smoother transition of my base color between highlight and shadow. Even though Kermit has white on his face and his chest, I'm using a gray color as my base color there. I don't want to use pure white until I'm adding those final highlights because that's going to be the brightest paint on the canvas and it's going to draw your attention right to that white. So we don't want to start with white, we want to start with the cooler shadow shades and then bring our brightness up as we add more detail. Here I'm blending a color for the base layer of Peach's fur, and she is more of a burnt sienna mixed with a little bit of flesh tint, maybe a hint of yellow ochre, and some white mixed in as well. Her ears are a darker brown because they're in the shadow, so I'm using cooler, darker shades for parts of her that are in shadow just like I did for the other doggies. Now we're ready to move on to the base layer of paint for Bunny. Bunny has a yellow ochre plus white base color on the top of her head and more of a gray cooler color closer to her snout. She's also got the right side of her body in shadow, so a little bit darker over there. And she's got a very long snout, so we want to really draw that out and have some shadows on the right side of her face that'll give us the uh, depth that she has on her face. Okay, so you might think they look even creepier now than they did when I first sketched them. And that's okay because this is just the first layer of paint. I'm gonna let this paint dry for about a week and then I'm gonna come back and do some details. And what really makes the dogs come to life in a painting is the highlight on the eye. So that is when they're gonna start to look less creepy. Okay, the painting has dried and now I'm ready to go back and start to add a layer of detail on top of my base layer of paint. I'm starting with Mr. Kermit, starting to add highlights to the crinkles in his ears and the little eyebrow section right around his eyes. Just trying to pin in those little details. Now I'm starting to add some of the highlights in his eye. And as I mentioned before, this is when they really start to have 
a lifelike look. That little bit of light reflecting off of their eyelids is what really makes the dog come to life in a painting. I'm also working on adding the highlights to the nose and the area under the mouth. I'm just using a fine liner brush for this detail because the painting is 12 inches by 24 inches. I can get a fair amount of detail in by using this small brush. And I prefer to use this brush for adding detail, especially for painting dog hairs and adding small highlights on the eyes, adding small highlights on the tongue, in the ears. I can thin the paint down with my citrus solvents to get a really nice, smooth, straight, thin line. Staring at me. Stop. What are you doing? Get back. Go. Go away. Kermit was a little tough to paint because the reference photograph I took, or screenshotted, I should say. Uh, of him was a little bit tricky with the lighting. I wanted to change the lighting so that the light source was on him from the left slightly and it wasn't quite like that in the reference photograph so I had a little bit of trouble adjusting the lighting where I wanted my shadows and my highlights to be on his fur. So I'm gonna go back and throw in a third layer of detail onto Mr. Kermit. Now we're ready to move on to the second layer of paint on Peach. And I get most of Peach completed in this second layer of paint because her hair is so short and she has such smooth features that it was pretty easy to just get the rest of that detail in with just a second layer of paint. Isn't it cool how just adding that little bit of white and gray to her eye just made her look real all of a sudden. That eye looks real. And adding a little bit of a shadow under her eye because her eyes kind of bulge out of her face a little bit. <laughs> so she's got that little shadow under her eye and above the eye too. So it gives it a little bit more of a three-dimensional look by adding those details. Now I'm working on the left eye. It was a little bit uh, quirky look in there until I adjusted the size of it. Now they are symmetrical, so the eyes are looking a little bit better there. I'm also adding details to the nose and the hair on top of the head, making sure I have a nice smooth transition between my shadows and my highlights. When painting a dog's nose, you have those two holes where the nose goes in, <laughs> and then you those are typically black or the darkest part of the nose. And then you have a color that is a little bit lighter, but still pretty dark in between those two holes. You then have a nice little highlight around the edge of those two holes, and then you have a straight line that cuts down the center where you'll have a highlight and a shadow. So I'm trying to capture all of those elements in the dog's noses, and sometimes it can be a dramatic change in highlight and shadow whenever the nose is wet and there's a bright light right on it. But in this case, the dog's noses are all pretty subtle, so we're just having less dramatic transitions between black and gray on the noses.
And now we're ready to add details to Bunny, who currently looks like a very creepy alien. First, I'm working on adding some detail to her eyes. She has little eyelash, uh, eyelid things right above her eyes, so I'm adding that little crease there. Also adding the highlights where the light is hitting her face and shadows on the right side of her face. Starting to work in the details to build that three-dimensional look. And for Bunny's nose, I'm using the same approach I used for the other dog's noses. Her nose is a little bit turned down compared to the other dogs, so we have less of those nostril holes showing on Bunny, and we have more of the top of her nose visible. Now I'm starting to add my layer of detail to little marbles over there on the left. I'm starting to make the eyes a little bit more three-dimensional by adding that highlight on the eyelid and using a liner brush to start to paint in some of the hair right above the eye. He has these little eyebrows that are white and he's got some little white fur all throughout his face. Now that black paint is wet and it's reflecting off of my light, so I apologize for not the best view of marbles while he's wet and being worked on there, but I'm continuing to add detail to marbles, trying to get the correct shape of his face with the proper highlights and shadows. Here I'm painting his fur, starting to stick over his little jean jacket. I also start to add more details into the jean jacket including the shadows under the little collar and the little stitching along the edge of the collar. I'm continuing to shape the eyes here, and next I start to add some highlights to the fur on his arms and legs. Now we're going back with a third layer of detail on Mr. Kermit. So here I'm working on shaping up those ears, continuing to shape the eyes, Try to really build the contrast on Kermit to make him look more realistic. At this point I decided to work on Bunny some more because she is lacking the most detail at this point, so I wanted to get her about the same detail level as the other dogs are. And then I go back and I'll start to work on the other dogs some more. But for Bunny, my reference photograph or my screenshot uh, wasn't the best quality. It was a little bit blurry and the lighting was faded on the whole left side of her face. So I wanted to make up for that and try to make her fit with the lighting that I have on all the other dogs. So I'm building up those shadows on the right side of her face and trying to still show some features on the left side of her face. She has a little scar it looks like on the um, left side of her face near the, that center of her forehead there, so I wanted to include that. That helps you identify her as Bunny. And also working on her neck and her collar. By working on this shadow right below the ear, that helps to shape the face and make her face stand out from her neck area. Working on her eyebrows and getting the proper shape of the shadows there also helps to give her that emotion that she has in her eyes. And now we're 
we're starting to move back to Peach. For Peach, I had most of her detail filled in already. I just wanted to work on boosting the shadows on her face to finish filling out her jawline there and build up the little wrinkles in her fur on her back. So she was quick to get completed. Now I'm working on Carmen again, boosting the contrast of his shadows. I spent a while trying to really capture the correct shape and feel that he gives when you look at his eyes. Uh, it wasn't working for me for a while. I couldn't figure out quite what the issue was. I think I may have had the shape just slightly off on his eyes and maybe the highlight wasn't quite there yet above his eyes on that eyebrow spot. And then I'd also started to really come together when I finished filling in the detail in his ears and I boosted the contrast under his mouth. I think that made his face stand out a little bit more once I completed all of those things and he started to look like Kermit instead of just a derpy looking doggy. <laughs> And now we're back to Marble's in the bottom left. Something was off with the shape of Marble's head. I couldn't quite figure out what it was until the end here, where I just reshaped his forehead and changed the angle of his ear to be heading back a little bit. I think that also gave a little bit more space in between Marble's and Kermit and gave the painting a little bit more balance. So I was happy with that change I made. I just continued to add the white highlights where his white fur is and really build it up the contrast like I did with the other dogs. Built up the highlights on his little nose and worked on his little tongue sticking out of his mouth. The final features that I'll add when painting a dog's face are their whiskers that stick out of their little snout there and that's because after you paint those whiskers if you need to add more fur or change a feature under them it gets a little bit difficult you're gonna have to repaint the whiskers so it's easier to save those whiskers for last when painting your doggy's face just so you don't have to touch up anything finally I signed the bottom right corner of the canvas and I called this a completed painting Alright guys, this painting is now complete. This was a fun one to make. These puppies are really cute and I really liked capturing the expression on their faces, especially Mr. Kermit and little Peach here. So Kermit has kind of like an anxious look with the way that his eyes are oriented and then Peach also just has like such soft little fur on her face. It's so short and she has these big black eyes that just like draw you in. So. She has that really adorable, innocent look, and then Kermit kind of looks like anxious, but then his tongue sticking out, so then he also looks a little derpy, so... <laughs> These guys were fun to paint, and then Bonnie just looks like really sincere, like she really cares about what you're thinking, and then, um, yeah, Marbles looks like he's just really hanging in there and just kind of going with the flow. 
I think marbles looked like Yoda a little bit until I uh, adjusted his ear here at the end there. So that was uh, kind of funny. I knew something was off and then when I moved his ear, I was like, okay, now he looks more like marbles. But yeah, that's all I got. Thanks for watching my painting tutorial here. I'm gonna have a time-lapse video of this as well for you guys that just want to see the process in a two to three minute time period rather than watching this tutorial. And hit the subscribe button to get more painting videos from me and like this video and leave a comment if there's a painting video you'd like to see me create for you. Thanks, bye-bye.